Hello, my name is Jill Seibert and I'm a senior at Northern Arizona University. I am going to talk about how fish docking affects pre-existing fish populations. It is becoming increasingly difficult to establish and maintain fish populations in the wild. Thankfully, many states in the United States have fish docking programs. These programs are often partnered with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, more specifically, the National Fish Hatchery System. In fiscal year 2019, 69 National Fish Hatchery System facilities, one historical National Fish Hatchery System, and two other Fish and Wildlife offices distributed, meaning they released and transferred 240,104,173 juveniles, adults, and eggs of six different taxonomic groups, encompassing 112 different species into 46 states. With almost a quarter billion fish being released into the wild, that increases the chances of an ecosystem becoming imbalanced and or introducing disease. To better understand the effects of fish stocking, it is important to know what fish stocking is. Fish stocking is a fish management tool where fish are bred in hatcheries and once the fish are mature, they are released into the wild. You may be asking yourself, why do we need, fish? Why do we need to stock fish? And while there may not be a straightforward answer to that question, here are a few reasons why we stock fish. Many species of fish have low reproductive rates and slow growth rates. If they are not stocked with a consistent schedule, they may go extinct in their environment. Fish can be stocked to help reestablish native species or to increase population size. Another reason to stock fish is to help control or lower population sizes. For example, in 1966, Wisconsin introduced coho and chinook salmon to Lake Michigan in hopes they would lower the owl population. In 1949, owl boys accounted for 80% of Lake Michigan's entire biomass. With that being said, not all fish that are stocked are predatory fish. Some species of fish are raised in hatcheries, including rainbow trout, walleye, Atlantic salmon, northern pike, bluegill, and muskie. If you look over at the slide, I can have a picture of what each fish looks like. Before I continue, it is important to know how these fish are distributed. There are two ways fish are transported. That is through trucks and planes. And most people find it hard to believe that fish are dropped into lakes from the sky. But don't worry, there is a 95% survival rate for fish that are airdropped, and there is up to 99% survival rating for fish that are being transported by truck. Although organizations stock fish with good intentions, it has been found to be destructive to ecosystems. The Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations lists several conservation issues due to mismanagement of recreational fisheries, including, but not limited to, high stock exploitation, selective harvest of trophy fish, and therefore shifts in population structure, habitat destruction, unwanted catch and release mortality disease, introdu introduction of non-native species, and disturbance of the environment, which in turn brings the population size back to the place it started, if not smaller than it started. Ecozyn states, fish that are stocked are often apex predators. Native fish species may become prey of the introduced fish and existing populations will also have to compete for food and habitat. Again, this counteracts the intention of fish stocking. In 2016, an institute in Germany conducted a large-scale controlled experiment of a lecture intervention to understand whether communication of neutrally warded Scientific information about sustainable fish stocking might alter anglers' ecological knowledge and cognition about the benefits and potential cost of fish stocking. This study consists of 17 randomly selected angler clubs from Germany who engage in self-organizing fish stocking. The aim of environmental education is to foster scientific literacy, awareness of problems, and pro-environmental behaviors. The lecture teaches anglers that economic waste is likely when releasing fry or juveniles into self-reproducing stocks where density-dependent population regulation is strong in the juvenile phase. Differences in genetics between source and supplemented wild fish populations as well as artificial selection in the hatchery environment can lead to delirious hibernation and ultimately contribute to the loss of locally adapted stocks through introgression of foreign genes. In other words, the hatchery-bred fish are not always compatible with native fish, this lecture explains to anglers that the stocked fish are also competing with the native fish for food and shelter. It may in other ways affect food webs and the structure of the ecosystem. 
Furthermore, each fish stocking event carries risk of the ecosystem of introducing invasive species, parasites, or pathogens. To conclude, the lecture was created to inform anglers of the risk of fish stocking and to see if anglers would still participate in fish stocking. Compared to the drawbacks of fish stocking, there are not many recorded benefits of fish stocking. However, there is still a positive side to fish stocking. For example, stocking lakes and streams can create new recreational fishing opportunities, support existing native populations of fish, and restore threatened or endangered populations. Stocking can also attract the attention of fishermen and encourage people to go out and fish. This event is often correlated with increased fishing license sales and in turn creates more revenue to use to protect and maintain natural resources. Fish stocking not only helps increase fish population sizes, it also benefits the economy. By generating more money from, fish licensing, from fishing license sales, more money can be used to fund fish hatcheries and research. With more research being done, scientists will be able to release fish with less negative environmental impacts. One of the main reasons to stock lakes with fish is to increase the population of a specific species of fish. In 2010, a different study in Germany found that, compared to the traditional regulatory approach of management by small minimum length limits, so that culling of large fish is encouraged, preservation of large and old individuals through harvestable slot length limits promises considerable benefits for fisheries quality without compromising for the long-term conservation of the population. Meaning something as simple as changing the minimum size limit can further improve the health of a population in the long run. It is only recently that fishing mortality exerted by recreational fishing has identified as contributing to fish stock declines. This case study discusses the importance of size limits on fish and its correlation to healthier population sizes. By setting a minimum length release limit on hatchery grown fish, it almost guarantees at least one successful reproduction per individual fish. In pike, this objective is usually achieved by setting the minimum length to 45 to 50 centimeters because most pike individuals start to reproduce at a much smaller size. However, for these pike to reproduce, that they must stay in their environment for at least one season, meaning the minimum length limit for caught fish needs to be larger than 50 centimeters. The goal of management intervention is to conserve the spawning stock of the pike population or its general biomass. This study only discusses northern pike, so it is important to note that maintenance of large size classes of pike and stock does not constrain the abundance and development of smaller size classes via increased cannibalism, as one might expect from this as pike are strongly cannibalistic species. However, the concept of controlling minimum length limits can be transferred only to other fish species to help promote reproductive rates in fish, therefore benefiting the longevity and survival of fish populations. In 2019, a university in Wyoming completed a study where they described hybridization outcomes across 27 locations in the North Fork Shoshone River Basin, where native Yellowstone cutthroat trout and introduced rainbow trout co-occur. They found hybridization outcomes varied across locations. Variables associated with history of fish stocking were the strongest predictors of hybridization outcomes, followed by environmental variables that might affect overlap in spawning time and location. Hybridization is worth studying because it has the potential to threaten biodiversity, and negative effects of hybridization on native species can include genetic or demographic swamping, potentially leading to the extension or local extraction of the native species hybrids, can also complete with parental species and in some cases have higher fitness. With that being said, not all trout are subject to hybridization. The goal of the study was to find was to quantify variation in outcomes of hybridization across locations and to connect patterns of variation explicitly to environmental and ecological attributes of tributes. Terries. Please note that the North Fork Shoshone River Basin has experienced extensive stocking of salmonoids over the past century, including rainbow trout and Yellowstone cutthroat trout. Yellowstone cutthroat trout without hybrid ancestry are now rare in this basin and throughout the historic range of the taxon. Researchers found when closely related species come into contact and hybridize, outcomes are often variable across replicate zones of contract. This causes and the evolution Yet evolutionary consequences of variable hybridization remain poorly understood in most systems. Although most trout do hybridize with each other, that does not necessarily mean it is a bad thing. 
In some cases, hybridization creates stronger, healthier fish, which in other cases it creates weaker fish. Research done in this field is limited, and each year scientists are making new discoveries. A study done in 2018 by a university in Finland discusses fish stocking effects on a food web dynamics and ecosystem stability. To complete this study, they created two stocking scenarios with two native fish species valuable for fishing. In the first scenario, we stock white fish into the ecosystem. In the second scenario, we stock perch into the ecosystem. Most fish that are stocked are often big game fish or predatory fish. The study utilizes native fish and documents their interaction within the ecosystem and food web. Here we explore the ecological risk of stocking and assess whether stocking compromises ecosystem-wide conservation and management objectives. This study shows that stocking does in fact alter the eco ecosystem's dynamics. The results from this experiment showed that increasing whitefish stocking by 50% decreased perch densities and increased whitefish densities only by 1% at each adult life stage. All that, although that number appears insignificant, it is important to note that the reason behind poor stocking result in the particular study was not quality of hatchlings because our simulations are only affected by the food web's internal dynamic. A more likely explanation for our findings is food limitation. Whitefish and perch larvae need whitefish and perch larvae feed on the same prey species, and the increased competition possibly led to the low stocking success and to the decrease in the biomass of perch, perch larvae. In other words, these two species of fish feed on the same source of nutrition, and by introducing more fish to the ecosystem, could not create enough food to support the population. To conclude their findings, whitefish stocking increased ecosystem stability while perch stocking decreased it. This study focused on the connection between fish stocking and the ecosystem dynamics. Both the case studies discussed in this section examine the effects of fish stocking on pre-existing fish populations. The study in Wyoming talked about hybridization among trout populations, and the study done in Finland talked about ecosystem stability related to stocked fish. Both these studies have found fish stocking does in fact infect pre-existing fish populations, and with that, there are positive and negative consequences to fish stocking. The Wyoming study discovered a pattern among trout that areas that are frequently stocked with fish have more hybridized trout and that it is becoming increasingly difficult to find trout without hybrid ancestry lineage. The Finland study discovered that non-predatory fish do affect the ecosystem stability. White fish help increase ecosystem stability while perch decrease stability. Neither one of these articles mentioned if the fish that were stocked introduced disease into their new ecosystem. They did, however, discuss how stocked fish alter ecosystem. That does not necessarily mean they altered ecosystems for the worst. In some cases, they made ecosystems stronger. It is important to remember the origin of fish stocking and the reasons why organizations begin to raise fish in hatcheries. Although there is currently more research done to the drawbacks of fish stocking, there are also ways to limit the negative impacts of fish stocking. The FAO limits lists methods to limit the damage caused by recreational fisheries, such as licensing of anglers and boats, establishing closed seasons, and developing size and bag limits. Another way to combat negative effects is to test the health conditions of both the fish hatched in hatcheries and that of the pre-existing fish populations. This allows us to see if both parties are compatible and limits the chance of disease being introduced. Please note that there has been very limited research done on fish stocking and its effects in pre-existing fish populations. With more time and research, scientists will be able to learn how to introduce fish into the wild more proficiently. And by completing more research, scientists will be able to understand exactly how hatchery-raised fish are introducing disease into the wild. Once the cause is known, scientists will be able to eliminate the threat. There are some ways, these are some ways to remove drawbacks of fish stocking. Thank you for tuning in to my presentation. I hope you all learned a lot and better understand the effects of fish stocking.